guys, let me just tell you, we are in for such a super treat. One of my favorite mother-daughter duos, the fashion icon, Misa Hilton, who is the fashion architect and the founder of the Misa Hilton Fashion Academy, here with her brilliant, brilliant daughter, Madison Starr, who is a designer and also the founder uh, and owner of Madison Starr Couture. Welcome to our first HBCU Fashion Summit. Thank you, Brandis. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So I want to start first with the fact that you guys are mother-daughter. You just graduated cum laude. Should I say, or did, am I right, Madison? Summa cum laude. I wanted you to correct me. That's what I was going to say. Nope. Summa cum laude. Um, from Howard University. And the fact that you guys, I see you working together. I see you like supporting each other. Madison was there at the Fashion Academy. How have you just helped such an incredible bond while also navigating your career? Well, for me, you know, Madison grew up right beside me. So it was always um, our personal relationship, but she was there watching me work as well. So now that she's old enough to work in fashion, it is just, it's just natural is what we've always done and what our, what our experience has always been. I love that. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, when she was a baby, she would be on set with me. She came to work with me. She would be in the stores with me and the showrooms with me. So it's just really natural. Yes. I think a big part of it was just seeing my mom working and that was really just inspiring to me to be in all these different places and to be going up and down the city going to all these different locations and just it, it was very normal but at the same time it was also very inspiring and it was very just like eye-opening to what I could do it with my life and my work and there was it, it, the possibilities she always just showed me were limitless I love that. I love that because you learn so much just by looking. I bet I do you go back and look back now, Madison, and go, wow, I was picking up so many things I didn't even know I was picking up. Yes, absolutely. And then when I went to college, that's when I realized everything I learned because it was like she wasn't there physically, but her voice would constantly be in my head, the things that she taught me or the behavior that she modeled for me. So it became almost in instinctual. And I was able to just rely on everything that I was able to see and be a part of. And then also it, it really was grounding and it was humbling too, because I was able to be around such important people and, um, you know, people who have really shifted the culture and been so transformative and pushed our culture forward and to be in these rooms and to go into HBCUs and be learning about these people or knowing how they've moved people from across the country or whatever whatever the case is it really was very humbling and grounding because it showed me like wow this is this opportunity that I have in my life is something that I could never just overlook or take for granted. That's so incredible. As you were there, what was the one thing that kind of stuck with you, stuck with you that your mom had told you or taught you over time that really helped you to thrive on an HBCU campus? Um, work hard and be a good person. <laughs> she always be like, be nice, <laughs> be kind, be kind. She and told me hard. that too, Madison. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so she will always say that. Be kind, work hard, work your way up, you know, be humble and just continue to go for it and believe in yourself. I was going to say, and believe in yourself. Yeah. I love that. So Misa, <laughs> you started your career when you were super young. Yes. And we have so many students here and they're trying to figure it out. You know how stressful it is trying to figure out like what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I think I want to do fashion. How did you know that fashion was the right path for you? And then what advice would you give to the students? Um, I knew it was the right path. For, I knew fashion was the right path for me because it made me feel alive. I, I was so passionate about it. It's something that I would do for free. And to me, that's how you really know if you love something so much that you would do it for free because you enjoy it that much, that means you're connected to a gift. You're connected to a gift in that lane. And so for me, that lane was 
fashion and it just everything was natural everything flowed I it, it it was just like a magical experience almost and I'm so blessed to have had that so early you know because I didn't have anyone around me who worked in fashion or any role models I didn't know that a fashion stylist um, and designer image consultant was even a career path that you could choose but I followed my gut I followed my intuition and it always felt right and I was always really good at it so um, the success also gave me confidence you know I had to be brave I had to be courageous with a lot of the looks that I would create that I was creating which were very different from what we had seen before for African-American people um, in the forefront because remember I came up in a time where um, hip-hop was going mainstream and then hip-hop married R&B and so the music and the sound was changing. And so the look had to change too. And I was right there at the cusp of that. And so um, it felt real, it felt um, right. And I felt so alive and so happy, you know, and that was really how I could tell I was on the right path. I love that. That's very tangible, right? That they can take and go, what's the thing that I would do for free? <laughs> That's a good indicator. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it is. I'm thinking about myself. What a really good indicator. What is yeah. that thing? And then that'll know you're on the right path. Yeah. Um, and, and you know what, Brenda, I want to add to that. And so later on, when I started um, MHFA, the Me Sales and Fashion Academy, it's the same thing to educate, to mentor, to inspire, to share information felt so natural, something I would do and that I do all the time anyway. Mm -hmm. And so to create um, an academy around that was so natural as well. And it's something that I really love and feel just as passionate about. And it is incredible. Like if you guys don't know about the Misa Hilton Fashion Academy, I highly suggest you looking it up, going to check it out. It is um, such an incredible experience. I loved every second of it. Thank you. Madison, I know you've done a lot of things. You did a lot of things on Howard's campus. Tell us about, you know, not waiting. Because a lot of times you're on HBCU campuses and you're like, our fashion, Pete, we don't have it like other people. And, you know, it's so easy to complain about what you don't have. But what I saw you do was actually bring the things that and me and you have never had this conversation, but this is my assumption just looking in. I saw you bring what you wish the school had. So can you talk about, you know, starting, you know, how, how much power students have, like what you did on Howard's campus, um, how you brought some of the things you wanted to see there in the fashion space? So one thing I must say is Howard has always been a school that was big on fashion. I think because it's the Mecca, the first uh, HBCU, we, and as Black people, we just have that natural essence and that style. It's like, if you're not dressed, everyone's kind of looking at you like, what's going on? <laughs> like, what is it? Like, you know, it's very, it's very much that. And I love that about Howard and actually going there brought that out of me because I was like, oh, wait, I could do this. Like, I didn't, I, I, for a long time, I didn't think I was going to have a career in fashion. I thought I was going to do more community-based work, which is something else that I'm also passionate about. And um, when I got to Howard, being around uh, other very creative people, being taken under the wing by a stylist right now who's very, um, who's doing a lot of important things. Her name is Kelsey Ashley. She's someone that helped me and was a mentor to me. She was a senior when I was there and um, some close friends that were very creative, they brought that side out of me. I think that, that I, I couldn't take all the credit because it was something that would lie dormant in me and Howard uh, watered it and, and, it, and it helped me grow into the young woman that I am today. And um, I think for me, what was integral in my part of being there is I was someone who had a way into the fashion world through my mother. So um, although, and although I did have a way in while I was at Howard, I worked as an assistant stylist on the fashion shows. I continued to work my way up until my senior year where I was selected to be the coordinator of the homecoming fashion show. And that's when I was able to develop relationships um, with so many different people um, through, through my mother and also off the strength of just, you know, being personable, being kind, networking, taking advantage of being in these rooms and these spaces and bringing that 
that to Howard. So I would say for me, I like to look look at what I did as being a connector because some we may not all be able to get into the room at once, but if you are in the room, it is your job to reach back and bring others forward with you. So because I had a, a little bit more insight and wisdom into how things worked, I was I was always sharing that. Similar to what my mother just said, just just sharing what you have and being sort of like a mentor, but it wasn't it wasn't a mentor situation in my case. I would say we were just learning so much from each other. And I always would like in, in the homecoming position, I was a leader, but even in those positions, I said to them, like a leader is also a good follower. And I think that it's important to have, uh, to be able to lead a team, but be on the pulse of a team and know what they need and know what you need to bring as a leader to make it successful. So um, that's what I would really say helped um, my time at Howard was just being humble, being aware, using the connections that I had to help others along the, excuse me, along the way. I love that. What were, who were some of the people that um, supported the event that you had? And I know, you know, I, I know that there are some connections that you had, Madison, but I think also for all HBCUs, I don't think they understand how many people want to help. Like how many people actually want to make their fashion event the hottest event in Atlanta or in Norfolk, Virginia or in North Carolina. So can you talk about like reaching out and, 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 how people were willing to help? Um, well, I, I was speaking with the students at FIT and I had this joke that I said to them and I said, you know what, be a pest. And the reason, <laughs> and the reason I said be a pest is because you want people to believe in you, but also have everything together. But you want, to, you want people to believe in you and you want to be adamant about what it is that you're trying to create. And not only that, but you want to be professional. Like I said, you want to have your stuff well put together. You want to be able to... Um, Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry. You want to be, I'm just thinking about what I'm saying. You want to be able to um, show these professionals that, that you're working with or that you're aspiring to work with that you would like a, a chance and that you are prepared for this chance. And um, I think that that's what it's really mainly all about yep. is um carrying yourself in a, in in alignment with what it is that you're trying to bring forth and um also having a purpose in what you're doing like in in at Howard when I was doing the roots fashion show in 2019 I was uh, like very adamant about celebrating black designers black cultures the purpose and the intention was so strong that I think that that's what made people like Anton Phillips and Gucci and Dapper Dan um the the, uh lovely people at MCM I was able to work with the Macy's um location in um in in um Excuse me, it's not coming to me. Tyson's Corner? Yes, in Tyson's <laughs> Corner, thank you. In Tyson's Corner, champion. It was so many Adidas um, through DTLR. So, but I think that the energy that they felt for me was one, my professionalism, my passion, my belief and my intention and wanting to be purposeful in what I was doing. And I think that's what drew the right people in. And I also want to say to the students, it's not always going to be a yes. Not everyone responded. There were so many other people that I wanted to reach out to, but I wasn't defeated by no response or no, I just kept going and I trusted in God. And I knew that what my purpose and my intention was, and I held that and it came together the way it was supposed to. And I also would say to them, be humble because you are students and you are working your way up. So, you know, like I said, I started as a a fashion stylist and an intern and I allowed myself to be mentored and learn and, and, you know, and and to be humble. So I think that if you are in a place where you feel like, uh, you, you know, why would they want to choose me? You have to know that you have to, you have to be your own why. And also, um, have confidence, but balance that confidence out with humility. 
I love that. Look, I see your mama over there like, no, <laughs> tell me. <laughs> I and that. I, that's why you have to believe in yourself and you can't be afraid of a no. You're going to hear no. Someone said to me the other day, I know you never hear no now. I said, of course I do. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I was like, yes, that happens still. But that doesn't stop me. I'm still going to keep going and keep trying. And that doesn't take away from my passion for anything that I do. And I think that that's something that you have to keep from the beginning of your career as a student all the way throughout life. You cannot be afraid. You have to be fearless and your belief should keep you fearless. Mm -hmm. You have to really have faith and believe in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love Even that. Even when no one and, else does. Yeah. And that's not always easy, right? Because we have though, we have that doubt that likes to creep in and tell us, you know, things that are contrary to what we know are true. So I, I, I love that you said, like, people will say no. People say no to me every day. I think people say no to Oprah, potentially. <laughs> so, yeah. right, she hear no's too. Yeah. I don't think you ever get to a place where you don't hear no. Maybe the only person who don't hear no is like Michelle Obama. I've been <laughs> I, I'm thinking she might be the only person. <laughs> she might be. And I'm sure she's heard some no's. Absolutely. Yeah, right? we, in the White House, maybe something she wanted to do inside. They probably said, no, you can't do that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you are, she probably heard a lot of no's. A lot of no's. Right. Uh, let's talk about your upcoming projects. What projects do you both have coming up that we can be on the lookout for? You can start. Okay, well, I'm not going to say too much because that's just how I am. But if you want to <laughs> keep up with everything, visit uh, www.madisonstarcouture.com. And pretty soon I'll have some very exciting things being shown. And um, yeah, that's, that's it for right now. So. I'm excited. We're all curious now. <laughs> and excited. So I'm sure you guys go to the website. Yes. Yes. And um, I have my fall drop with Macy's, which will be available very soon. It's going to sell out quickly. So do not wait. Do not wait. <laughs> Guys, I waited to buy Misa's collection. I don't know what I was doing. Sitting on the beach. I don't know. But by the time I got on the website, it was all gone. So I got whatever they had left. I'm actually wearing a piece. Madison's wearing a piece um, as well. But the pieces are beautiful. Misa, it Thank is like you. so cool. I love that collaboration. Thank you, Brand. It's just my collaboration with INC and um, uh, MHFA is an industry partner with the Newark School of Fashion and Design. So we're really excited about that. Yes. We will be having a summer camp uh, August 17th through the 20th, I believe. And so I'm excited to partner with uh, Newark School of Fashion and Design because it is a new school and what they are doing in fashion and the curriculum and the education that they're gonna be providing is phenomenal. And it's a high school that I wish was around when I was in high school because I would have been able to understand my gifts even more at an earlier age. And so I'm excited to partner with them and um, we have some great things in the works. I love that. Love, love, love that. So I'm going to end this with, I would love for each of you just to give students, um, you've shared so much. You've shared, you know, don't be afraid to hear no. Believe in yourself. Be a pest if you need to be a <laughs> pest. Um, make sure you show up professional. Be kind. Be a good person. Um, all of those things. Is there really to work your way up? Mm, there we go. Say that again, Misa. Be willing to work your way up. Be willing. So what do you mean by that? Like be willing to start from the uh, entry level position, whether it's an intern or whether it's just observing a, and being in the room and work yourself up from that point to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. You don't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter where you start. It matters where you finish and it matters how much you can grow and the time that you have dedicated to a, a specific um, project or, or a specific goal. And so don't be afraid to start at the bottom. When I started, I started as a backup person. When I had to sell my idea um, to Andre Harrell along with Sean Combs um, for Jodeci, which was a, a new image, I was his backup. You know what I mean? I was there to support the idea that he was bringing to life. And although it was um, 
when you look back, it's like, wow, who wouldn't have thought that was a great idea it was something very different, but I was willing to start where I was and to be a backup and a support. And then later on, I was able to step out um, on my own and create my own career as a fashion stylist. I love that. Yeah. Well, this was phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. Thank you so much, Misa and Madison. So many jams were dropped. How can people find you on social? I am at Misa Hilton, A M M I sorry, <laughs> at Misa Hilton, M I S A H Y L T O N. And I am at Madison Star, underscore Madison Star, um, M A D I S O N S T A R, Madison Star. Thank you so much, lady. This has been such an honor. So grateful for your time today. I know the students are already inspired and have notes and hopefully they'll hit you up and tag you yes. um, on some of those quotes and jams that you dropped today. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Brandon. Always a pleasure.